you've pored over the manufacturer's brochures and you've trawled through the options lists. You're well aware that what you drive says a lot about you. But what exactly is this BMW convertible yelling at people? It might be telling them that you're a sunny optimist. The UK is a big market for dropheads, and yet the climate is usually completely wrong for such cars. Too wet or too cold, or both. So you have to trust that there will be enough days of good weather to justify the premium over the hard top. And in climates where the weather is more reliably dry, it's often too hot or too blisteringly sunny to have the top down. For me, open top driving is about getting back to basics, to feel as if there's nothing cutting me off from my environment. But have cars like the BMW 6 Series become too sophisticated? Can they ever hope to provide the rawness of real top-down driving? The car's figures look great on paper. The 650i has a 4.4-litre V8 petrol engine with more than 400 horsepower and 600 newton metres of torque. Even the lower-powered 640i puts out 320 horsepower and 450 newton metres of torque from its straight six. The motor is an impressive bit of engineering. There are twin turbochargers nestling in the V of the cylinders. There's direct fuel injection into the combustion chambers variable valve timing. Now, all of this means that despite the power available, CO2 output is just 249 grams per kilometer. All of that technology and power should add up to a pretty impressive driving experience. Let's see whether it does. The 6 Series convertible is a big car, 4.9 metres long, 1.9 metres wide, but it drives like a smaller one. You can leave the 8-speed gearbox to change ratios automatically, or do it yourself with these paddles. Either way, what I thought might be a gearbox with far too many ratios turns out to be about right. But I do find that sometimes it takes back control when I don't expect it. A 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 5 seconds, plus a top speed that would easily pass the 155 mph the car is limited to, show that the BMW has overcome its two-ton bulk. 26.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle is not too bad either. This does also have room for four adults, something of a rarity in supposed four-seat dropheads. But a car's external styling is possibly the biggest factor in any buying decision. For a car that claims a sporting pedigree, and has a price that starts at £73,000, its appearance is curiously understated, even perhaps ever so slightly dull. BMW says its curves derive some of their inspiration from boat design. But when current high-performance sports car design is all about angles, this softer look is, well, brave. One thing I hope I won't be trying out is the active bonnet safety system. A sort of ejector seat for pedestrians, which is supposed to help them survive an impact with the car when it's travelling between 12 and 34 miles an hour. Explosive charges lift the aluminium bonnet to allow the person you hit more room to bend the car, which could make the difference between broken bones and just bruises, or indeed between life and death. There's also a head-up display, an option that costs a thousand pounds. This is the sort of technology that's been available on big military aircraft for years and it's just now starting to trickle down to light passenger jets. In some ways, driving a car requires more intense concentration than flying a plane because there's always something close by to hit when you're on the ground. So this sort of technology is long overdue in passenger cars. This is a lot more sophisticated and smooth than the vehicles I usually lust after. Ultimately, rather less involving to drive as well. But perversely, some of the £12,000 worth of options on this car allow me to dial back in sportiness and responsiveness to the suspension, to the gear changes, to the handling. So it may not be raw, and it's certainly not basic, but it does tick quite a few boxes on my list for an open-top sports car, including an excess of power. I'm Rod Jaggi of the Financial Times.